Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got uh, a pretty interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the PMP Titano. Not a uh, not a small pocket knife, and it's sort of like a, a small folding gardening shovel that is tactical. Um, this is a, this is a fun one. Obviously, this is in the category of you know functional and durable, but uh, kind of haha, like holy moly, it's gigantic, and that's just kind of the point, right? Uh, it's intentionally supposed to be kind of goofy, and. I love stuff like this. You know, I, uh, I love practical knives. I love, you know, the, the stuff that's easy to use on a daily basis. But I also like things that are almost created with the exact opposite. It's almost like they're created to be as inconvenient as possible. I think it's kind of funny. And I love that PMP, um, you know, goes out of their way to design crazy things like this. So, um, anyways, this is actually available at a couple of different places. I'll link it down below under DLT. If you live in the United States, if you live in Europe, I'll link it uh, at Tools for Gents. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to PMP for sending us in. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. An interesting uh, note here before we do some size comparison. So um, PMP has used a number of different OEMs in, in the past. Like for example, their um, original Alpha Beasts, uh, the big nearly half inch thick <laughs> blade stock Alpha Beasts, were manufactured by Riot. So I was wondering, you know, who who did this? On Tools for Gents, it's listed as Maxace. So apparently, Maxace manufactured these, and that is apparent. I mean, the the machining quality on this is very, very good. It's very precision. So just uh, if you wanted uh, wanted to know and didn't, there you go. So let's go ahead and get a measurement here. The uh, <laughs> the overall length of this knife is uh, is pretty big. If you go to you know, the butt end of the knife itself, it's, yeah, it is, it's, it's nine inches, nine and an eighth if you include the uh, part of the backspacer that's sticking out there. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. Any custom scales you see in this section can be found down in the description under Original Goat and others. So up against the AD10 and the AD20.5, you can see here, the AD10 is not a small knife, right? It's not an absolutely massive knife, but it's the presence in the blade. Obviously, this is what's making this knife appear so large. That and the fact that it is very thick, which we'll talk about here in a sec. Uh, so, big knife. How about up against the, where is it? There it is, the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3. It's obviously much larger than these. And then finally, last but not least, the Benchmade Group Tillion, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. And let's put it up against the Hogue Deca. All righty. Yeah, it's it's big. We, you guys get it. How's the action? Well, the blade will definitely fall shut, and I'll tell you that's mostly because the thing is, it's not just tall. It's a super thick blade. I mean, we'll we'll take a measurement on that here in a second. But that's that's what's going on now. That that aside, Max Ace. If you've ever handled a Max Ace knife, they do excellent machining. They they know how to do this. So it's not just that the blade is very very heavy, but a lot of that is is coming from it. It's it's pretty smooth in the pivot, right? Um, but uh, it, it still feels tight. Like if the blade were much smaller, I think it would feel much, it would just feel much tighter, right? It would feel a lot like how we knives feel, I think, um, right out of the box. So yeah, but <coughs> you do get that that feeling of the fall shot action. Now the flipper tab is pretty good. I think personally, the detent is plenty, like on a much smaller knife, it would be a, it would actually be considered a heavy detent. The problem is there is so much blade and the leverage that you get off of the flipper tab is fine, but not quite enough. So I got to be honest here, the, the, the flip, while totally possible, right? You can see there, I tried to push button it and it just barely made it. I think the detent needs to be slightly heavier for something that's this big. You really got to pull on it to get that thing to, you know, because it's such a big knife when you deploy it. Obviously, if, you, if you're going to use it, which... I'm sure somebody will try to force this into a practical daily role, right? But if you're going to use it, the power of the flip doesn't really matter, right? It's the whole point is just get it out and it'll do that. But, you know, for those of us who are buying it for what it is, right? This is, this is 
more of a showpiece, more of a collector's item, right? I mean, this is somebody who's made it, – it's, it's a knife that's made for somebody like me who knows very much what it is and what it isn't and just enjoys the fact that it exists. For somebody like me, I still want the thing to have a satisfactory flip. I want the detent to feel like it is accommodating for the weight and mass of the blade. And in this case, it's, it's not really the case. However, <laughs> the the hole there uh, and the detent uh, combination with the, with the hole here, it actually works very well. Uh, reverse flicking this knife, which would seem like the most uncomfortable thing in the whole world, is actually made possible and pretty enjoyable by the fact that the D10 is not super heavy. So if you like flippers, this one probably isn't going to be your favorite thing in the whole world. If you like knives you can reverse flick, you're probably actually really going to like this one. I mean, that's as far as like big hulking overbuilt knives go, I'd say that's the easiest reverse flick I've ever pulled off with a knife like this, right? Now that matters to very few people. I'm just trying to give you guys an idea of what you're going to deal with. Uh, something that I absolutely hate is this Look at this area in here. It's so sharp. It's like they scalloped it out, but they left this sharp ledge. Now this this lock bar has a lot of tension. I mean, there's a relief cut there, but this is a thick piece of titanium. And that relief cut is not a huge relief cut, and it's it's still got quite a bit of material there. And the, the tension on this lock bar is heavy. So moving that thing out of the way, that is legitimately painful, right? Um, now, it's not like you're going to die. You know, you're not going to, like, keel over if you disengage this, but... Literally just two disengagements, and I'm like, man, that is just digging into my thumb. Um, not not comfortable. They really should have done that differently, right? And it's it doesn't need to be cut, but you know, above this side because th there's so much space there. But geez, just like just like a simple chamfer would have been fine. The fact that they like carved this out and left this sharp ledger is just really was a bizarre choice. Um, so yeah, the action's fine, but disengagement of the lock bar is very unpleasant. Let's go ahead and um, do carry profile for those of you who are going to buy this and actually carry it, which, hey, you know, knock yourself out. I think that's great if, if that's what you want to do. Um, it's pretty thick. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's, it's not, uh, this is not a little guy. Uh, how about length and height? Even more dramatic. Up against the Spyderco PM2 and Para 3. You will notice this in your pocket. You will. There's, I don't believe there's anyone on earth who would switch from whatever they're carrying to this and go, yeah, it feels the same. This is such a bizarre shape because it's so tall and it's huge and it's thick, right? And it's heavy. You're going to notice it, period. Um, but it does fit in the pocket. I mean, I've been uh, like just in regular jeans. I walked around with this thing for about a day and a half, honestly, is all I could spend, right? If you've ever wondered like what goes into a metal complex review, some of my, some of the ultra expensive custom knives, I obviously don't carry and use those, but those are, you know, I, I try to point it out in the video. I say, this is an overview and presentation, right? This is more of show and tell. This is not really a review in videos like this, where I'm reviewing the thing. What goes into it? I'm mostly a design reviewer, so I like to talk about, you know, the uh, the overall execution, uh, the quality, uh, the uh, the materials used, the value, the design. I like to talk about who I think it's for, right? If it's more for a collector, more for a serious user, stuff like that. Um, but when I do my testing, it's just a couple of days, and uh, you know, some knives get carried a bit more, right? If I really, really love them, they end up in like a permanent rotation. But I'm using knives for regular stuff, the stuff that I would use a knife for, right? So I'm not going out in the forest and trying to survive with the thing. I'm really just doing normal stuff. So I really want to know how does it perform, you know, from the perspective of just like a normal dude. Like, how does it feel? How does it perform? How convenient is it to just walk around and live my life as the most normal dude imaginable? So, and the answer is with this is horrifically inconvenient. <laughs> I feel ridiculous carrying this thing around. But every time I get it out, it puts a huge smile on my face, right? And for some people, that's really all that's important. I know how many of you feel that and get that, right? You kind of force it into the pocket and go, oh, it's not the most comfortable thing, but man, I love it. And you know what? That's perfectly fine. Um, I, that's that's the type of person I am. So um, let's go ahead and weigh it. What are we looking at for materials? Titanium, a crap load of titanium. In this case, it's PVD coated. And then for some reason, um, M390. Now, that's a hilarious choice for the geometry here. Um, but, you know, if you need the premium feels, if you're going to spend this much money on a knife, well, it has M390, so you can you can sleep easy, right? Um, the weight, 
Are, is it even milled out? I mean, yeah, actually quite a bit. And there are holes that go all the way through. So they, they did that and they skeletonized it, um, which is good. They got it all the way down to 11 and a half, <laughs> 11 and a half ounces. Not the heaviest knife, not the heaviest folding knife I've shown on this channel, but wow, it's, uh, that's a lot, right? substantially more than, you know, I would say the average is like four to four and a half ounces for a pocket knife, maybe, maybe less, maybe the average for me, I think for the, like, the average weight of a pocket knife on, like, you know, like just the average dude out there, it might, it might be more around three and a half ounces, something like that. Um, but, uh, so that's going to be um, <laughs> pretty heavy. You're, you're definitely going to notice that. Let's measure the blade stock thickness. I'm pretty sure this comes in slightly under a quarter inch. I think it's about 230 thousandths, if I, if I remember correctly. I've had this guy for a bit. Yeah, 235 thousandths. So we are absolutely approaching a quarter inch, which is just ridiculous. Um, let's go ahead and do a hardware check. Uh, I would get out my tools, which are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. But uh, these aren't torques. They're just, they're flathead, right? And... Um, yeah, it literally just kind of like a, a semi-thick flathead screwdriver will undo these. Um, and um, yeah, that's really it. Now there's a, a lot of screws. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six on each side, including the pocket clip screw. And then we have a T6 for the LBS, an over-travel disc. Um, and uh, yeah, and then a, a thicker a flathead for the pivot. Now, for some reason, people look at this because it's not a traditional flathead, sort of like how Hinder Knives has like an obvious flathead. They look at this and they call this proprietary. I don't, I don't know what goes through your mind when you you think that this is proprietary, right? Sort of like how sh people think Shirogorov screws are proprietary. Yeah, you could get a, you kind of in some cases might need a, a really special fitted tool in order to like take it apart without leaving any marks whatsoever. But also a regular screwdriver will work, right? So I personally, I'm not going to call this. You call it whatever you want. I'm not going to call this proprietary. Uh, a flathead screwdriver will work. Interesting. Not sure why they just didn't use Torx, but okay, whatever. Um, I think that's it. Let's go ahead and move into the meat and potatoes here. Um, is this a comfortable knife to hold? Ah, it depends on how you define comfortable. I'm going to say kind of. Um, there's just enough room in this handle. If your hands are bigger than mine, I wear an XL glove, which I always, you know, this is the part where I just bum out a whole bunch of dudes. Guys, fellow fellow, uh, fellow people, whoever you are, if you wear an XL glove, your hand's not really that big. That, it's like I always say, that's how Home Depot makes you feel really good about <laughs> buying gloves. If you wear a 2XL or larger, your hands are actually big, right? So... If you have hands that are any bigger than mine, you might actually end up getting cramped here. And it's because of this back here. Now, I think the idea behind a handle shape like this is so that while you are <laughs> doing impact cutting, it keeps your hand from slipping off of the back. Um, so that's the implication here. Would this make a good chopper? Uh, no. Um, I mean, I guess if you had to use a folding knife. But a fixed blade is always a better choice. Now, I know I've made it too far into the video to say that before, um, you know, somebody else did in the comments. But, yeah, I mean, if you're curious, it does not take a professional bushcrafter. You, you, we, we, don't, we don't need that level of professionalism here to identify this. A fixed chopper style knife is, is always going to be the better choice. Um, I don't think it's a good idea to chop at all with any pocket knife. I mean... I, the, some of the strongest stuff out there, the triad lock, I mean, that that might be your best bet, but I would say still a fixed blade is a better choice. I, I certainly, you know, as big and robust and heavy duty as this frame lock is, I definitely, I don't think that, I, that that's a good idea. And you know what? I very much doubt if you damaged your knife while chopping with it, even though the handle shape, the heft, the overall style of it sort of implies that you could use it for that, they definitely, I can promise you without even looking, there is nowhere on their website or any other retail website that says you should use this for chopping, you definitely shouldn't, right? It's big and you you know, you might be able to define it as heavy duty circumstantially, right? Is it is it slightly more robust than the average pocket knife? Well, yeah, you know, sure. Um, but more so in the way that just like 
the, the thicker materials are going to resist things slightly better, but still not obviously not an ideal object for that. So what I'm saying is, is that ergonomically, it could be made better. And honestly, this type of knife might appeal naturally to a larger person. So I really wish that they had not done this and just let it be like that, right? Because number one, you, you're not... You're not gonna, realistically going to be chopping with this. Can you? Sure, right? Will it void your warranty if something bad happens? Probably. Is there even a warranty on this? I don't think so. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't, I don't think so. I think maybe you, you could talk with the retailer you bought it from, right? But going back through PMP or MaxAce, probably not, guys. So I wish that they had left this open for some of the larger folks out there who like to like stuff like this, right? Um, now, can you feel the pocket clip? Oh, God, yeah. That freaking robot scorpion stinger that they've got on there. It is milled and it's chamfered. But, man, it's so tall and so big. I mean, in order to match the theme of the knife, that's what they did. They, they obviously did not design any part of this for maximum comfort, right? When they designed the pocket clip, they, they definitely were not thinking, gosh, I hope this doesn't make someone's hand feel slightly uncomfortable. They, no. Uh, when they were designing this, they were like, let's just make this as crazy as possible because it'll grab attention. And that it did. Whether you love it or hate it, this knife got a lot of attention um, for sure. I think what turned a lot of people off is probably the price tag, as, as it usually does with stuff like this. But wow. Yeah, you're definitely going to feel that pocket clip. Holy moly. Uh, surprisingly, though, all of these areas in here, even though they look a little bit sharp, they're not bad. Like, and there's so much that's chamfered. It's, it's pretty good. One thing is for sure, when you hold this, despite the fact that it is uncomfortable and will definitely be made more uncomfortable during actual use, like if you're going to do like long-term cutting with this, oh boy, no way. Um, one thing is for certain though, you hold this knife and everybody that I've showed this to here locally does the same thing. Oh, you know, <laughs> whether or not it's comfortable kind of goes out the window. You just, wow, you know, that is an object. That is a thing that exists, right? But it's kind of fun. It puts a smile on your face, right? It's absurd. And it kind of translates that way. There's a, a certain level of self-awareness in this design where it's, it's so ridiculous that nobody should be mistaking this for an, a, a, a serious design, right? PMP knew what they were doing. Max Ace definitely knew what they were doing. They've, you know, they, it's like, what a perfect uh, combination, PMP and Max Ace, right? They knew what they're doing. And, the, and as soon as you pick it up, you're going to go, oh yeah, they knew. <laughs> it's just fun. I mean, look at the blade. This is absurd. They did knock these areas down here. The jimping, this actually works. And there's this harpoon stop right here. Your thumb's not going anywhere. There's no chance of your finger riding up in the blade. I wouldn't put it here. So you might call this a choke up, but I wouldn't, right? This is a, um, I don't, I, is it, a, I guess we call it a tanto. <laughs> it's more of a, some sort of, um, I, a geometric rectangular shape. You know, it's it's a um future. It's a robot shovel, right? It honestly, this looks like the Terminator's gardening tool. That's what it looks like to me. Um, is it sharp? Actually, yeah. Um, the geometry is thick, but the blade is so tall. I mean, it drops fairly aggressively to the final cutting edge. So what you end up with is legitimately a blade that can slice. Now, you can see what's happening here. Cutting paper doesn't really prove anything, right? Um, the factory edge is capable of slicing paper. We're lifting the edges here. We're, we're doing more of a tear than we are a slice. But it'll work. And even the final um, tanto edge, if I can get it to bite, you can see right there. That'll cut too. So, yeah, they can sharpen it. But you are still going to be pushing this whole wedge, this quarter inch, nearly quarter inch stock of M390 through the material. And it's got a lot to drag on because the blade is so tall. On top of that, if you get the black one, it's even more friction that's building up. So this is not going to be a convenient slicing or long-term cutting tool either. It will cut, right? You're trying to get into a package? Yeah, of course it'll do that, right? <laughs> Does it have a tip? Not really. This is not, it's going to take a long time to puncture something, right? Um, because the tip is almost non-existent, but it is there. I said almost this tip is probably better for puncturing. Um, so yeah, what is it, what is it good at? Nothing. <laughs> I don't think this knife is going to be good, good at anything, right? Um, but that's okay. I, it's, uh, it's great for receiving spit. 
movies. <laughs> it's great for laying on the table and spitting all over. I, just, I was joking about that on a live stream the other day. I, um, I never realized how much I spit uh, until I became a knife reviewer. And I was like, wow, man, it happens all the time. You could totally cut that out, Metal Complex. You just edit it out. Nah. <laughs> I want you to have the authentic experience. I want you to feel like you're here getting spit on in person. Sorry about that. Okay. They did do a good job with the PVD. Everything all the way around. It, it, it looks like a Max Ace, you know, creation. Everything is just perfect, right? The overall, the total execution, seating of the hardware, all of that, it just is great. And I think it's just busy enough in the right places. I think this is one of those designs where the holes work, right? There's nothing on this knife that looks out of place. You might say the overall knife is ugly, but did they stay on theme for the whole thing? They definitely did. Like everything they did, the 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 blade is just as wild as the handle. And the height of this blade is insane. I think this is legitimately the tallest knife I have ever reviewed, or the tallest um, folding knife. The height of this blade is two, it's almost two and a half inches at its peak. That is absurd. Really, really crazy, right? If you just like crazy stuff, I mean, this is it, right? It reminds me of that uh, big, um, uh, oh, yeah, Jim Skelton um, had this old video of this gigantic, this super tall, it's even taller than this, and it legitimately looks like a shovel. I always forget the custom maker's name. It, it even has a similar clip. In fact, I, I mean, this knife, I think, obviously drew inspiration from that one. I should have said that right at the beginning. I'm sure there's already a bunch of comments about that. I think this knife obviously drew inspiration from it. The pocket clip is very similar, right? But it's still, if you look at them side by side, it is, they're still different. That one definitely looked like a shovel, like with the, the fuller right through the middle, right? And the, it, it had a perfect spade um, blade, right? Anyways, um, it has a huge and very detailed milled backspacer. I mean, that that is a big chunk of titanium there. It's got um, texturing that's a little bit different back here than right here. It's fine. Huge lanyard hole if you really like lanyards. The pocket clip is recessed, and it is also milled. Um, and you know what? I think you can actually flip it over to the other side for lefty carry because, yeah, in fact, you would have to because the barrel is the exact same size uh, or the... Um, where the screw goes in, it should be exactly the same size. Um, in fact, yeah, it's slightly smaller. That should actually work. I don't think it, it'll be, I mean, it'll still be nested. I don't think it's going to look the same because this side over here doesn't have this bowl on this side, but you should be able to flip that over and make that work. I absolutely hate the pocket clip. This was um, terrible uh, carrying this thing around. I mean, it, it actually does sink into your pocket. There's not really a lot showing. Um, that blade actually does sort of sneak under your pocket seam. But this this crap, man, where it comes down and is rounded and then comes up and over, it should swoop. That's what makes a pocket knife easy to get in and out of the pocket, like this, right? This is just pinchy. Add to, the, uh, add to that the fact that the, this is a stiff, thick piece of titanium. Every time, in and out of the pocket, it was just snap, snap, snap. And I had to hold my pocket and mash that thing in there. Man, a couple of times I pulled it, didn't have a good enough grip on it. This pinched and I kept pulling and the thing came out and my hand slipped off of it. So I, I had to like catch it in midair. That's why I don't like that. You know, people argue, oh, well, in a tactical situation, right, where you're, if, you, if you're hanging on to a grappling hook and doing backflips off a of, wall, then the, the pocket clip retentional can really keep it in your pocket. I'm not doing that. Most of us are not doing that. In fact, the people who are talking about the um, tactical stuff are probably also not doing anything that would require that level of retention. Certainly not. I mean, if, if somebody's doing stuff like that, this isn't the right option. So this, the pocket clip, the best thing about it is it stays on theme. Everything else about it is absurd. Um, we have the lock bar stabilizer disc, which is cool, like the hinder style stabilizer disc and um, a lock bar insert. So there's no way that, the, honestly, the tension alone on that lock bar is just ridiculous. God, look at this cleave in my finger, man. Um, yeah, that is a robust, robust frame lock. Man, no movement up, down, left, or right. It's just really hard to disengage. Well, it's not hard to disengage it. It just... There's a lot of pressure and it's sharp, like I said. But you can see, listen to this. <laughs> it sounds like you would expect it to sound, right? It's not, the sound of the lockup isn't necessarily indicative of 
solidity or strength, but uh, if you feel this thing, it's very reassuring. We have, as it should be, an oversized stop pin with plenty of shouldering, lots of contact there. It does run on bearings. There's no plan any drive. I mean, it's absolute, there's no flex or anything. Absolutely solid. Uh, there is no lock stick, which is kind of amazing. I mean, you can see here the um, the total percentage is actually pretty substantial. If you look at the tang of the blade, where it's getting, I'd say that's a good 30% of the uh, tang of the blade. So that's great. No lock stick, no pivot lash. It is, it's pretty consistent in here, but it's just a little bit tight. That'll break in over time. The detent is clicky and heavy. It's just such a large blade and it is centered with no detent lash. Can I recommend this knife? No, <laughs> not, not, not to everybody at least, but specifically for people who number one are used to this territory, this pricing territory. How much is this knife? $550. I mean, wow, you are getting, um, you know, max ace execution. You're, you're getting a, a lot of material. I mean, honestly, enough M390 to make two or even three blades. Um, you're getting enough titanium to do a, a couple of handle scales total, like between the two. It's a lot of material, right? So for people who reduce the value to just the materials alone, I would say calculate how much material is here, but that's not really how we calculate the price, right? We consider the amount of machining involved. Where is the machining being done? In this case, this is China, right? So it is not nearly as expensive to do this in, in China as it is like, for example, the United States. But again, we calculate the total amount of material and the level of execution here or the precision execution is very, very good, right? Um, there's a lot of work involved here. I'm not sure if I'm 100% sold on 550. Now, listen, for people saying it's, no, it's worth nowhere near that, it depends on the personal, like, that's your personal thing. This just factually does cost a lot of money to create, right? But at a certain point, the rest of it, right, the markup that you're paying, which some people are going to say it's got $450 of markup in it. No, it doesn't. You don't have to listen to those people. It does have markup in it. And the rest of what you pay, you have to, you have to ask yourself, is this the type of knife that I'm, that I'm interested in, right? Um, I've spent substantially more uh, money on um, knives that are equally ridiculous and just have different elements. So if you're not somebody who likes big, thick titanium frame locks, you're not somebody who likes the overbuilt craziness, right? If you're somebody who's looking for a utilitarian economic cutting tool, this obviously isn't it. You you can tell you could have figured that out in the first 10 seconds of the video, right? But if you do like this stuff, you're familiar with um, PMP designs, you're familiar with Max Ace execution, right? And this is like personally your type of thing. Then that $550, which is the lowest price I could find anywhere, um, that might not sting as much, right? Even to people who just are so all about this, right? They don't care about it being convenient or utilitarian. They just want the big, crazy, wild, you know, precision stuff. Even then, that's going to be a hard price to swallow. Realistically, I think they probably should have kept this like real, like well under 500, right? I'm not going to sit here and tell you I think this is a $300 knife, right? Or that it should be under 400. No, I think it deserves to be over 400, but I, like 450 or so, that's kind of where I would have guessed. I was really shocked to see it at 550, right? Um, so yeah, I, I think it's a bit overpriced, but hey, if you're all about it, then go for it. Outside of specifically those types of people, to everybody else watching this, this is clearly not a recommendable knife. <laughs> it's fun, though. I'm happy to have this in my collection, for sure. As a collector, I appreciate this. Probably never going to carry it again. Thanks so much to uh, PMP for letting me check this out. Uh, like I said, links for this guy down in the description. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.